Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the famous theater room here at the Lennox Lounge. You're going to be listening to the sounds of the Sugar Hill Quartet as we do a conversation entitled Fern Roots. Welcome to 30 Frames a Second, and I'm Greg Lasseter. That was the great blues jasmine's Patient Higgins. And my guest today is no other than the great man himself, John Brightway. How are you, John? My pleasure. I'm glad to be here. Hey, right, so Patient Higgins. Now, tell us a little bit about why we're watching Patient Higgins. Well, for one thing, uh, he's going to be performing in uh, Mount Vernon, New York, okay. this uh, Sunday coming uh, at the PJS Jazz Society's second Sunday concert. Uh, PJS Jazz Society does a concert series called the Second Sunday Jazz Series on which uh, we put on concerts from the second Sunday of the month from September through April of the following year. Wow. And uh, incidentally, this is going to be uh, our 35th year at the end of April next year. Okay, okay, John, so tell me about how did the PGS come about and what do you do for the PGS? Okay, I'm president, PJS. but let, let me just explain. Okay. Way back in the day, mm -hmm. uh, the pastor of the church in Mount Vernon, uh, Reverend Clinton Glenn, mm -hmm. loved jazz. He had an extensive jazz collection, mm -hmm. and he wanted to have what's today called Jazz Vespers, mm -hmm. a very conservative church, and they didn't go for it. <laughs> so <laughs> what he did is he formed an organization called the Presbyterian Jazz Society, mm -hmm. and that was the name of the organization for many, many years. Mm -hmm. But when we went to approach uh, to apply for our 501c3, right. uh, we then changed the name to PJS Jazz Society. That's right. who we are now. Okay. And, and we've sorry. been in the same location for 34 years. So you've had some greats that come through there. A lot of them. So, like some people like who? Jeremy Pelt, David Fathead, Newman. Uh, well, Patience played before, but uh, Steve Touré, Jimmy Owens. Uh, Houston person who's uh, been our lead uh, musician uh, mm -hmm. for many many years he just played for us last month J there's too many to name so Anthony Montague a wow. favorite yeah wow. so what got you into it John how did you personally get involved do you play an instrument I do not and that's even that I want to hear this story now this you is don't a, play this is a very good story yeah tell me about tell us about that 
when I was a kid, my brothers uh, had an organization in the Bronx called the Jazz Art Society. And they put on jazz concerts at the Club 845, which at that time was sort of like the, the birdland of the Bronx. Right. And I was a teenager, and I saw people there like Betty Carter and, and Jay, Jay Johnson and people like that, and Cannonball Latterly. Mm -hmm. They were having those guys play there. Uh, and Lou Donaldson, who's performed for us as well. So that stuck with me. And then uh, many years later, uh, I found that there was a jazz organization in Mount Vernon, and I joined, just a member. Right. And uh, a few years after that, they made me the president. <laughs> so here I am. So how long have you been president? About three years. Three years. Okay. So as a president, is it your job to go out and find the talent? And how does that work? I try not to do it unilaterally. I hear a lot of people. But what I do is, if I hear somebody, I bring it to the group, and if they have somebody they, they like, they'll bring it to the group, we'll make a, a decision as to which person we're going to invite in to perform. Okay. As it turns out, though, we have quite a few uh, musicians who are in our short list. And also, uh, we have a lot of musicians that have been trying to be on the short list. <laughs> so uh, it's a very popular venue, and, and uh, we've been doing very well with it. So we are very, very happy to, uh, to look at new people. But there is a, it's, it's a lot of good people who uh, apply to us right. and want to play, and we just have to coordinate our schedules and so on. Um, it becomes a scheduling thing. But generally speaking, by the late spring, we know the whole season. For the whole setup. Yeah. So tell me. What is the PJS Society, PJS Society's, Jazz Society's objective? Our goal has always been to present jazz in an affordable uh, manner for the people in the community locally. But our people now come from all over the area. I, one day I was online uh, in, in the, uh, at the uh, concert, mm -hmm. and a guy online, was, he was there from Boston. So we do have people come from a long distance. Um, so so that's, we, we're trying to provide jazz at affordable prices. Right. Well, by which I mean, they, the concert has two sets, uh -huh. whereas most places you got one set and you're out the door. Right. Uh, we have two sets, and we try to be nice. We offer free wine. Really? And, and people, you know, and they have snacks and stuff they sell. Right. But it's just a, a very congenial uh, venue. We set the area up. It's the parish hall of a church. Oh, okay. But uh, it's decorated like a cabaret. Right. And we have the spots and everything like that, and away we go. Now, let me ask you, being that it's in the church, how does that play well with the very religious bodies of the church? My past is a jazz fan. <laughs> And he doesn't have a problem with it. She. She. My mistake. What about the congregation overall? Since, you know, you know Presbyterian, they, well, any kind it's of... It's not, the, it's not the religious side of it. It's cultural because a lot of the, the uh, congregation is from a different cultural background, uh, Caribbean, and they don't lean toward jazz as much as they lean towards Caribbean music. But they are coming across also. They are starting to, to attend and... and uh, learn a little bit about this wonderful music. Right. Part of our mission is to train and to educate, and so we want people to hear it, learn it, love it, and enjoy it. Now, tell us about Patient Higgins coming. When is Patience coming to? Sunday, January 11th. Okay. Uh, concert starts at 5.30. Oh, it starts at 6, and I'll explain that. Okay. We, part of our mission is to offer opportunities for young musicians to play, and so we have uh, arranged to have uh, young musicians play from 5.30 to 6, little, just to be able to perform in front of real people wow. instead of like you're performing for a teacher for a grade. Right. A lot of these kids are uh, oftentimes in high school and they play phenomenally well. Wow. You know they love the music and they really uh, dig into it. Do you see the PGA, PJS, I can't get that right today, I don't That's know why, right. PJS Jazz Society offering any kind of scholarships um, for young musicians to go in that direction? Not at this time, but uh, as, we, as we go forward, that may very well be the case because uh, at one time that particular church had a music school. Uh -huh. And uh, hopefully, uh, if we're lucky, we'll resurrect the music school 
for a jazz venue. That would be awesome. How does one get a hold of you guys, man? We're online. Okay. How, what's your PJSJazz.org. Okay. And we're on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> and you got to be on all the social media. Everybody's right? on Facebook. PJS Jazz Society, Inc. on, on Facebook. And uh, you can call me or, or come to the concert. Okay. The so best is to come to the concert. Absolutely. So if you could give any advice to the aspiring jazz, future jazz musicians that are coming along, what would it be? Practice, practice, <laughs> practice. <laughs> and come to some of the concerts. Um, a lot of times young people, they, they want to do their part, uh, play their, n their little number, and go on. Uh, they should, if they're wise, right. listen. Listen to the seasoned professionals because those are the guys who, are te who you should be learning from. Right. It's not like you're in class where you, 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 take a, you play a tune, get a grade, and walk out. Right. You should right. be listening to what the other guy is playing to know that, hey, I can learn from this person. Right, right. Awesome, awesome. John, I thank you so much for stopping by the studio. My and pleasure. Uh, we, you've, been on the you've been on the show before. I have. Right, right. So thanks again. And you heard it here, John Brightweight. You know how to get a hold of the PJS Jazz, Jazz Society. Society. Okay? And don't touch the dial. We'll be right back with no other than Nat Wood. I'm good. Hello again, I'm Greg Lasseter. We're back 2015, the first show of 2015 at 30 frames a second. As you guys saw, we had a great guest. Uh, but today is the kickoff for 30 frames a second. And we're going to talk about an array of things that are going on in the world. But preferably right now, we're going to talk about what's going on in New York. And what's going on in New York, if you guys haven't heard, is our biggest issue is NYPD. That's going to be an issue. And we're also going to speak about the passing of a former governor, um, Cuomo. Uh, we're going to, uh, and you guys can call in and uh, interact with us. But without further ado, I have the great man himself who started all this and who's doing a great thing for the world as well as his community, Nat Wood. What's hey going brother, on? What's how going you on? doing, man? Happy it's New Year, man. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. We're back. We're back. Better, bigger, and stronger. Yeah. yeah. Let's kick it off, Nat, with the infamous NYPD. Um, First of all, the, the uh, Lynch, the head of the PBA, sh uh, should be ashamed of himself. He has behaved, the, the New York Police Department has behaved in a way that is not civil, and not humane. Some of the things, some of the stunts that they have pulled, when, uh, when Ramali Graham was, was, was killed in front of his grandmother and six-year-old brother, they actually celebrated this. I don't know how you celebrate someone's death. That is, that is not even uh, uh, being a good human being. Uh, when they went to a funeral, of their own. And, and, and let's remember that the police officers that died were both people of color. Right. That's correct. That's correct. An Asian uh, 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 and, uh, and a Latino. That's correct. Both people of color. Right. They, was try they were trying to make some warped political statement and turn the funeral, the solemn occasion of these people uh, dying into a political statement about them. Right. And the political statement that they were trying to make was not even a valid statement. Right. Because this had, the, the deaths of these two young men had nothing at all to do with protests or protesters. If anything, 
Right. If anything, the protesters was making reference, were making reference to the fact that too many people are dying for, for, for little or nothing at all and something has to change. Right. And their attitude, uh, the attitude that the uh, NYPD has displayed right. is proof positive that something has to change. Right. They need to turn down their rhetoric. Right. They need to they need to address the issues at hand. They need to become more civil and more civilized in the way they conduct themselves. Absolutely. Now, I see that, you know, and people seem to get it really twisted that the death of those two policemen, which is unfortunate, has nothing to do with Correct. political with Correct. A, with a protesting. Correct. Now, I, I, pers I personally mm. hold the chief of police responsible for his officers turning their back on the mayor. Right, right. Now, right, if I right. was Mayor de Blasio... Which is ridiculous. Right. Mayor de Blasio should call for the resignation of the chief of police. Correct, correct, correct. That's ridiculous. Correct. correct. As a matter of fact, I'll go further than that. Any police officer that engaged in this type of behavior right. should not be a police officer. I agree. They, they are not exhibiting the kind of personality traits required to do a job as, as uh, delicate and as, as deadly as being a police officer. They're just not, they're just not up to the task. Which, which, which goes back to, for me, goes back to the mayor himself. Correct. Mayor Correct. de Blasio Correct. is a weak link. Correct. You know, because Correct. the Correct. first time that would have happened Correct. to a Bloomberg Correct. or to That wouldn't have happened to Mike Bloomberg. No, it wouldn't have happened. Right. 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 It so might have happened to Giuliani because Giuliani is as out of control as <laughs> He might have been leading it. He's, he's right. a total idiot. Right. Um, but it would never have gone down with Mike Bloomberg. Right. They and, wouldn't dare pull this on Mike I Bloomberg. And I don't understand why de Blasio, see, Strat Stratton, Bratton, Brighton, whatever. Uh, Bratton. 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 He's, he's a politician. Correct. And he's playing both sides against the middle. Correct. And if de Blasio cannot see how the chief of police is playing him. There are some things that have nothing to do with the politics at hand. Right. Uh, two men died. Their, their deaths had nothing to do with the verdicts. Their deaths had nothing to do with politics in New York. As a matter of fact, if 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 the person who shot them, who was not from New York, right, right, as a matter of fact, he had already gotten to an altercation. He had he been, killed he, his, shot his girlfriend. Right, right, right. and he um, 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 he has a, a lengthy record of violence. He had a lengthy record of violence, like nineteen arrests. He's gone from state to state. Uh, uh, he shot his estranged his girl, his girlfriend, girlfriend right. um, and then came to New York and opened fire on two police officers. Right. Right. These, these were not the acts of protesters. No, the protesters were not. at that time were busy laying out in traffic, right. uh, uh, risking their own lives right. to bring attention to, to, uh, to uh, the brutality. issue at hand. That's Correct. exactly right. Correct. Correct. And see, and this is what's twisted in America. Do not get it twisted. One thing had nothing to do with Correct. the other. Correct. You know, Correct. I am not sitting here Correct. and going to say Correct. all policemen are bad. Correct. Correct. You know, we're, de we're protesting that people of color are dying at the hands of policemen for no reason at all. And that the institution somewhere, somewhere, someone, and I'm, I'm actually believing that the only one who could do this on the, on the scale that it's being done, the only ones who could influence this type of behavior across the country is the federal government. Right. And, 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 and the federal government, uh, by um, allotting so much money to the militarization uh, of police, police forces yep. and, and privatized prisons are in part and parcel to why this uh, aberrant behavior is going on all across the country. And see, and people don't understand that. They, it's not just happening in New York. Correct. It's happening everywhere. Countrywide. countrywide. Right. Exactly. Right. So everywhere. then... Doesn't that ever lend just lends itself to like whoa? Right, right. Light bulb has right, to come on right, somewhere, right, right? You know, and it keeps happening. Right. And that's right. what I I tell right. people when they get mad at the grand juries that right. come back. Right. Be a part of your community. Correct. Do your civic duty because you could be that person to sit on the grand jury. Correct. 
Correct. That's how we start. Correct. And, and first of all, you have to make sure that the grand jury system is fair and equitable. Right. And, and, and uh, the grand jury system is a prosecutorial system. Right. It's not a defense system. No. The prosecutor, the, uh, the district the attorney, doesn't go right. in there. Uh, to defend, no, he's, the going per he's going in there to try to get an indictment so that he can bring about a case. If he's doing anything else, he's not doing his duty. That's he's not exactly doing his right. job. And the and the relationship between the district attorney, the the local district attorneys, right. and the police department suggests uh, strongly that it is not possible for district attorneys to to, to prosecute yeah. police officers. Well, see, here's the thing: it's not. It's not what you said. What was the word you used? Suggested? No, it right, is. Right. It is. I'm being. I'm yeah, being. It cute. is. Let's I'm, just call right, it what it right, is. I'm being cute. You know, the police department needs the the D DA district attorney's office need the police and vice versa. Correct. Correct. So correct. and the district attorney needs the police more than the police needs the district attorney right, to make their case. Right. Right. Now it seems like the police department doesn't need anybody. Right. It's just a it's just a <laughs> rabble all. law right. unto itself. Right. Well, see, and that's why we constantly every week talk about. Be a part. Do everybody wants to get out of jury duty? Right. Jury duty is your civic duty. Right. right. So it can right. be fair, right. somewhat fair, right. Right. more fair than it is now, right. Right. because you look at the makeup of of the uh, Missouri. There's like two black people. Yeah, in a, in a and town with a town of all black, right, almost seventy percent black people. You know, you have a, pol a whole police department where there's three police, uh, uh, black, black policemen people. in there. That's crazy. Um, it's crazy. The city council, the whole political structure are white people. So white people control the politics. White people control uh, the implementation of law. Uh, in, in the town of Missouri, there is a heavy, heavy penalty for being poor and black in Missouri right. because they tax the hell out of poverty. <laughs> they live That's by crazy. shaking down poor black people. That's crazy. On everything, on every little ticket you can think of, right. they shake down black people. So what do you attribute that to? Is it the ignorance, lack of education? What do you attribute? Because this is not just happening in Missouri. This is no. happening all across it's America. It's happening in, in, in New, New, York. New York City. Well, look at, look at Staten Island. Staten Island. Look at the Garner case. Right. Staten Island. Right. They're more white right. than right. than there in Staten Island now, right. than there are blacks right. or, or Latinos or any right. people of color. Right. At the same time, right. there were no black people on the grand jury at all. Also, also, and let me say this about the media, um, um, especially what I refer to as the white media. I'm not even going to say the mainstream media because it's mainly white media. Right. It's all um, media. white corporate media. And they, they actually have the ability to lie by omitting information. So they can right. tell you a certain part of the truth and, and get the masses to uh, go for this soundbite system right. and not analyze the fact that they have not given all the data involved so that you can make a determination. Right. Uh, case in point, this morning um, on, a, on an M MSNBC show, right. uh, a room full of white folks, room full of white folks. Uh, one white guy, very rich white guy, very rich white guy, <laughs> says, he says that, uh, basically that, that um, he is concerned with the fact that the NYPD is not issuing the same amount of summonses that they have issued and not making the same amount of arrests. And then he moved on. Wow. Now, now um, I'm screaming at the TV. And fortunately, there was another white guy who actually said to him, well, you know, yeah, but the summonses you're talking about is like, you know, pissing right. in between cars right, and right, the traffic right, right. side. It has, right. Actually, it's like shaking down money from people <laughs> and whatnot. Right. Um, 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 then he says, okay, that's correct. Then he says something else really stupid. It's, it's not stupid if you're white because you're coming from that perspective. You right. have no knowledge of anybody else except, you right. know, the all your friends are right. rich and white. Right. You're rich and white. Right. Everybody right. on the show is rich and white. Right. Um, he says they're not making uh, the, uh, the arrest, and this um, concerns him. And he says it's true that the justice system is unfair to blacks. He gave us this little caveat. Right. Um, but then he said it's also, but you can't deny that New York is better over the last 20 years. 
What's he attribute that um, to? Um, First of all, he was non-specific. <laughs> I still don't know what the hell he means what is by that? better. What, what better. He said the way? streets were cleaner, yada, yada, yada. Okay, fine. From your rich white perspective, right. in bringing your, your rich white uh, uh, friends and family in to a cleaner city is, is, is fine. <laughs> right. However, if you're not a rich white person, Right. The fact that the uh, rents are now three and four thousand dollars a month yep. does not make this a better no. city. No, right? It's an unlivable city for the correct. F not, not, not even. Just forget about the lower income for the middle. For Anybody the who middle works class. for a living, right, has a yeah. uh, uh, tremendous difficulty in living in this city. Right. Now, if you just want to turn this damn city into Sun City, South Africa, right. for your rich white behind, <laughs> then fine. Your rich white ass is happy, right. and uh, uh, you can, when you die, you go to white folks' heaven, and ain't nobody there anyway, so 90, I don't know where you're going. 90% um, of the people that work in New York City, they don't live in New York City. Correct. That's correct, crazy. Correct, correct, that's correct. Crazy. And you're talking about a median income that's like $30,000 and, and has uh, dropped right. uh, substantially in the last 20, the same time period that you're talking about, everybody else is making less money. money. Right, right. That's insane. That's insane. But the masses don't get it. They, correct. They just... Correct. And I think the correct. people... Correct. And the people in the media, nobody said, wait a minute, at least be specific. Right. I don't mind you having an opinion that's contrary to mine, but at least uh, disseminate right. the data so that people can formulate different opinions. And the media won't ask your, the questions. They won't ask the questions. They won't. We'll they, ask the questions. This is the media right. that refuses right. to ask the, the questions. Right, ask the questions because... It doesn't. They, media has, as you know, you and I know it. The media is not the media anymore. Correct. It's not the media. The media. It's not. This the is media. the closest thing you're going to get. That is to correct. Media. That is Where, correct. When we that grew up, correct. we don't state our opinion. Correct. We state the facts. Correct. The data. Correct. Right. Then you can formulate your own opinion. That's I'm correct. not trying to think for you. Right. I am trying to encourage you to to. Take all the relevant data, all the data that I can get my hands on it, and then make an evaluation. Right. I am not telling you that you should think police are good or bad. Right. But you should understand all the information that is available related to an incident, every single aspect of it, and then make a determination. Now, let me ask you this, Nut. NYPD, as you see it, is out of control. They're yes. worse than LAPD. And yes. LAP yes. used to be the worst. Yes. What needs to be done? L tell our viewers all over the world what do what needs to be done for NYPD to act right. If First of all, it's not just NYPD, but NYPD is one of the most militarized uh, um, uh, police forces on the planet. As a matter of fact, the weaponry that it has at its disposal. Uh, could rival many small countries easily. Um, right. <laughs> also, because of the fact that that um, one of the one of the biggest market movers in the country today is the privatized prison system. Right. It, um, and it need and the privatized prison system needs to maintain uh, ninety percent capacity. You need prisoners. Right. You right. need prisoners. It is encouraged by quota systems, right. by uh, uh, this uh, retarded ass broken windows policy right. to engage black people for um, no reason at all where black people end up either, uh, uh, either uh, in prison or, or, or dead right, right. for no reason at all. Right. And the media contributes to this because they don't put out the data related to this right. stuff. Now, uh, explain, not to cut you off now, explain to our viewers about the broken window, window syndrome. This is crap. This <laughs> is like, this is like a policy where the police department is encouraged to engage everybody for every single reason, almost on a military aspect, uh, uh, that it somehow makes the city safer uh, if you just like engage uh, 
mostly people of color. Right. Mostly pe right. people of color. Right. Um, uh, let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, um, right. and it's encouraged to do this. Uh, when we refer to the Eric Garner case, right. this is the only this is the only show that says constantly there was no damn cigarette. None. You keep you keep telling people that he should have he should have like done the twelve years of slave stuff. The black people is is uh, uh, that this is not twenty fifteen. Right. This is eighteen fifteen. Right. And that upon command we are to produce our slave papers. Right. Right. Anytime the white man comes up to us and, and asks us, us for our it. slave papers, we just supposed to bend over, say, do what you want to right. do. We cannot walk in peace. We cannot come and go in peace. Um, and it does not even matter if we are engaged in any criminal activity right. at all. Because you just make it up. There was no cigarettes. None. There was, was no one ledge. buying any cigarettes. He didn't even have any right. cigarettes. You're talking about he sold a cigarette out of his pocket. Well, that's not illegal no. uh, until uh, tax day. Right. And that's not, and, and that doesn't matter because he was too broke to pay taxes on right. the damn thing, so he wouldn't owe anybody anything. Since so his they, death. Right. So this was just a bunch of policemen bum-rushing a guy for no reason, and that person ends up dead. Right. There is no legitimate reason right. why we should not be able to come and go in peace. Right. There should not be uh, eight or nine policemen with their guns drawn every time they say our inspection stickers are out of right. date. That's crazy. And we end up police dead state. in front of our children. Police state. That's what this is. It's basically a police state. and A totalitarian again, police state. Well, you know what? What I'm bothered by, this under the de Blasio or administration right you would think he would have a little more sympathy a little more be a little more aggressive correct. towards correct. the police correct. department correct. correct he could set the standards and why correct. why doesn't he correct. correct i don't understand why he why he just not say sit down with the police chase and say this is the way it's going to be. Correct. That you need to conduct yourself in a way that is representative of people who wear this uniform and right. this badge. Right. That you do not engage in celebratory activity when somebody loses their life. That you do not use uh, 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 your status. And, and, and uh, let me make this perfectly clear. Uh, the police department is one of the few positions that actually offers employment with dynamite benefits yep. and the ability to retire at a very early age yep. in a city uh, where, like, black and brown people are facing unemployment at, uh, at 50 at 50 percent at the right. 50 percent rate. Right. Right. Um, many many people uh, in this in this city are either making millions of dollars or, or less than 25 right. thousand. So it's in, in our city that we live in, we don't have a medium. We don't have we a have middle ground. That's, right. That's right. That's right. And That's right. That's to right. That's be right. like half of the That's policemen, right. That's right. I would say That's over right. 90 percent of policemen that work in New York City, they don't live in New York City. Correct. Correct. And 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 we are we are paying for we are paying exorbitant health care uh, 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 costs for police officers who are oftentimes obese. <laughs> why 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 are why chase? am I paying I can't afford health care for myself right. and you taking my money and giving it to a fat cop who <laughs> smokes cigarettes? And listen, I've smoked cigarettes. Right. right. You know, but nobody paid for my health care. <laughs> Hold on, we got a call. Carla, welcome to Thirty Frames. Oh, um um well, so yeah, it just goes back to hey, uh, brother. Uh, uh people uh dealing with us and, and looking at us as slaves, right? And uh, this is why uh, they attack our people, they attack us because we are black. First of all, I have a problem with uh, uh, <laughs> Lynch uh, uh, threatening our community mm -hmm. and threatening our right to uh, protest out in the street for something that is wrong. How could you want us to, uh, want, uh, to be people to have sympathy for police officers when they are uh, murdered, right? But yet you still you've been doing the same thing to our people for the last three, four hundred years while we've been in this country. Uh, the problem is we have to change the mindset of the people in the police department, and that comes from the administration, and that comes from 
not our administration, New York, but the U.S. government itself towards our people. If we don't understand that we have a right to defend ourselves and our people when people come in our community and kill us, they're going to keep doing the same thing. That's the support that I made very clear. You have the right to defend yourself as a human being when people kill you and murder your people unjustly. And that is my comment. Y'all better be blessed. Thank All right, you. thank, thank you, you, brother. Let, let's, you know, we'll, we'll go back to that. Right, He's right. correct. We have another call. Yeah. Caller. Okay, mm -hmm. callers, um, before you call us, when you call us, turn your volume all the way down on your television. Um, yeah. Okay. Caller, you're And when I give you the sound like this, it means uh, the volume is fine. Don't mess with it anymore. Caller, we got a call. Did we have a call? Okay. Now, you, right. you can go, go with that, what he just said. He's absolutely right about that. Well, um, first of all, we, uh, we, got we a do call. have a caller. Okay, call uh, put the caller through. Let's, uh, let's see what the caller has to say. Welcome to 30 Frames a Second. Good afternoon. Good Hi. afternoon, brother. How you doing? Happy, happy New Year to you guys. Happy, happy New, New Year, Year as well. brother. Happy New Year. Uh, I'm going to uh, give you a, a few comments here. You know, uh, listen, uh, first of all, uh, the cops good. turned their back on the de Blasio uh, during both funerals. Those are the bad police that, that, we're, that we're trying to get That's rid of. That's exactly right. Okay. Number two, um, uh, I'm sick of these uh, black guys going on these uh, shows like CNN and refusing to call a spade a spade. Right. Jamani Williams, uh, Calvin Butts. Calvin Butts had the nerve to ask uh, the person that was interviewing him, where is de Blasio getting his information from? Sharpton. Reverend Sharpton is a very dangerous man, and if, if de Blasio is smart, he'll ask his wife to teach him the electric slide and <laughs> dance away from Reverend Sharpton, because uh, Reverend Sharpton, to me, is uh, just a, has as much of a hand in all this mess as Lynch and de Blasio. And uh, I think that uh, when Rachel Nordlinger was underneath uh, Charlene McCle uh, de Blasio, I think she was put in there as a spy to keep her, uh, to, for her to keep an eye on de Blasio. And uh, last of all, I think, uh, um, you know, uh, there was a report in the paper today about the, uh, re the rape uh, the committed by Sanford Rubenstein or the, or the no, non-rape or right. whatever you want to call it. And one of the pieces of evidence that was taken out of Rubenstein's apartment was a Viagra bottle with Reverend Sharpton's name on the prescription bottle. <laughs> I heard okay. that. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, uh, you, 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 you can right draw now. your own conclusion from that, but I, uh, <laughs> I think the duck is quacking right about now. He ain't saying that black. Okay. And then the last thing, I think Reverend Sharpton needs to go back and listen to that 14-minute version of James Brown's song, Talking Loud and Saying Nothing. When he's talking about Mr. Loud and Wrong out there marching and, and better get himself a gig, I think Reverend Sharpton missed something there along the way. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank now, you, brother. see, I kind of agree with this, brother. Yeah. I'm not a Sharpton fan. Mm -hmm. I'm, not a, I'm not any of those well, guys. Uh, with me, it's not even, and I think we got another, another call. call. But no, go ahead, uh, you if you the call is call? there. Um, um, Caller, welcome to 30 Frames. Hi. Um, thank you so much for what you're doing. Um, you're welcome. Listen. I, I think that we need to give de Blasio his term uh, to find out some of these things, including just what the brother that called before me. He, he is so right. Um, Shopton has probably been around too long. He has become corrupt. But de Blasio, I think, got hit with ice water uh, when he saw the childish and vulgar behavior of the police, as they were led by Pat Lynch to do. Mm. And so he's learning some things. And uh, all in all, he and Obama both know that their sons are vulnerable. So their minds are in a different I believe they're going to lean in a better direction as time goes on. I also think we have to remember that Cy Vance Jr.'s platform was he said there was a connection between the social, the, the, the community and the police. It had to be the social, you know, you, you have to include social work aspects to prevent a Fort Apache or a Dirty 30 where they're just dominating mm -hmm. and running amok and treating the whole community like um, perps. So, and he's not afraid to um, arrest and convict policemen. Schneiderman himself is an honorable man, too. I think the main thing is we can't keep on with the luxury of watching 
folks like you, I mean, you are town criers, and you show up, and, you, and, and, and you're giving us the message and providing the forum. But we need petitions and more marches and keep the cameras going, our own phone cameras. Right. And I'm a lot older than some of those protesters, but anything to encourage them, if it's giving them right. sandwiches, I don't know. Right. But I know none of us can sleep anymore. We simply can't sleep anymore. Right. And I think we got some leaders that we can work with. I sure hope so, because you're right. New York is now worse than uh, uh, California police. Right, right, right. right. Oh, oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank I you agree for calling. with you. We, we got another call. We got, call. We got a lot of calls. Yeah, yeah. Let's we just go through the call. We might as well Caller, take welcome to 30 Frames a Second. Thank you. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy thank New you. Year. to you as well. Um, I want to first talk about the Blasio. I don't think they can blame the Blasio for the situation. This goes back too far. We're talking way back. These men are telling us turn the police loose in our, depart- in our area long ago. And then we can take it back to slavery. Number two, our black leaders, as far as I'm saying, aren't worth much. Because they keep separating it. This has happened in this state. This happened in that state. But we need to think across the United States where it's happening. You know what I'm saying? Right. And number three, I think that maybe black people as a nation get a little crazy. Because what's the definition of crazy? They keep doing something over and over the same way and expecting a different result. It's time for something new. You don't have to take Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay, you. next caller. Caller, welcome to 30 Frames a Second. You're on the air. Can you speak up, please? Caller? Hello? Hello? Yeah, you're, you're on. on the air. Hi. Hi, my name is Robert Sanchez. Okay. Hello? Yeah, yeah here. we hear you. Hi, I apologize. My name is Robert Sanchez, and I'm a East Side Harlem resident. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm a young man, I'm only 30 years old, but my whole entire life, I say since I was about 16, I've been stopped um, illegally. I'm a young man, young black man with a Spanish name, and um, I just think that the most important thing that we do have to change is the relationship between cops and young men like myself. Because we do come outside with the feeling like we're going to get stopped, and we do come outside maybe defensive, and I don't think there's any answers for that. There's nothing that we can do about that because that's just how we're raised and that's how the police treat us. So I think that what's something that's important is to have someone like myself, a young black male who goes through this, come out and give his actual personal feelings without any, any anger right. and have tried people to understand us because they look at us as animals like we come out the house this way, but we don't. When you're going home to your son and you get stopped, and my last name is Sanchez, and the cop looks at your ID and says, you don't look like a Sanchez. You look like a Watson. Those are the bottom things. That's the bottom line. Stuff like that. They get people from other parts of the state or city to come into neighborhoods where they know absolutely nothing about the community, right. nothing about the people, nothing about the parents. That definitely has to change. And I would love to give my opinion on that and talk. Mm. I write blogs. Like me, I said, my name is Robert Sanchez. Let All me right. ask you a question. Um, yeah. um, the fact that, that, that police officers come into the community with a pre-existing, uh, a pre-existing uh, uh, philosophy right. of how to treat people of color, especially males and whatnot. Um, are you the problem, or is the problem with the their police. narrow little minds? I, I would think it's the police's Correct. problem. Correct. Because they Correct. already have a preconceived Correct. notion Correct. of how they... Sh- think they should walk into this Correct. community. Correct. So it's not the issue with the people of color in the Correct. community. Correct. Where I came from, you if, we used if, to have if officer you have friendly. a pre existing if you if, preconceived if, notion. If, right, a preconceived notion about the human value of Asians. Are Asians at fault or are you at fault? You're at fault. You're at fault. You're at fault. So when 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 uh, police officers or society in general takes a position that someone simply by uh, virtue of their color or their religion right. or any of those uh, uh, circumstantial uh, uh, components of their of you know right. th- uh, their personality. Um, who's at fault? Is it is it this ignorant ass or is it you? <laughs> no, and you know what? It, it it is the ignorant ass. Correct. And I blame that. On the police department in general, and and a society that that encourages this behavior, right? right. This should not be tolerated. Exactly. You, 
Co yeah, correct. Uh, you right, know, right. And, and furthermore, moreover, is that it comes from, it's a personal thing as well. Correct. So correct, if correct. you come in with that preconceived notion of how you walk into a community of a black or Asian. We, we, and we got another call. Okay. Uh, caller, I'm going to take another call. Thank Keep you. Keep calling back. Um, um, I like where you're coming from, and I, I really enjoy the fact that you're young and you have ideas. Um, uh, they talk about leaders, but uh, right. we have a whole other no. set of leaders, right. and they're called the people now. Right, uh, right, right. Sharpton ain't, Sharpton ain't. Not got leader. nothing to do with this. Caller, uh, welcome caller, to 30 you're on the air. Welcome to 30 Frames a Second. Hotel. Hotel. Hey, hey, hey what up, I, I want to say... Uh, Welcome back. Happy New Year. Thank uh, you. Happy New Year, brother. Thank you. Good. Good. Good to uh, have a show back. I'll be kind of quick as, quick as possible. Um, this whole situation is just basically uh, a lot of bamboozlement. I was under the impression that um, Mike Brown was shot after leaving the store that day, but actually he was never in the store that day. Right. Mike Brown was never in that store that day. That video was taken June 6th. It goes to show you how this media spins things out spins out of control. And they they won't put that forward, but that boy was never in the store that day. That's why those people in St. Louis or Ferguson were going, going, going off the way they were, because it was so much more... Mm -hmm. And the policeman so who shot him there. had no knowledge of any store incidents and whatsoever. Absolutely. He didn't and know nothing about no store right, owner. Right. Even the store owner admitted saying that the boy was never in the store. Right, right. So my question right. to you, uh, I have a question too, I'll be real quick. And this police shooting a few weeks ago is it, 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 radically interesting how the, the Air Garner situation was, was uh, taking over the world, taking over the universe. They needed something. I believe this is an entire conspiracy. Patrick Lynch said it himself two weeks, two, two weeks before. He already... He already uh, prophesied of those officers' death, and, right. and it came to pass. Right. And, and, and I think, it, you know, and it was a disrespect to uh, Commissioner Bratton. I don't care how people feel about him. Right. I don't have a problem with him. I think it was a major disrespect to uh, New York City residents. It was. And taxes. All of us. It was. Uh, he should lay down his gun and his badge. It was. Uh, of the PBA president, right, the right, right, the mayor. Right, right. It was, it was a major. It, and you right. know what? And I want to say one more thing. They gave Dinkins a lot of hard time because he was black. I may have not been for Dinkins, but it seems like Patrick Lynch and these, these white folks, whatever the black people, and now that Mayor De Blasio has a black woman, which mm. means absolutely nothing. Because right. white supremacists are, are married to all types of black people all right. around the world. That don't mean nothing. Right. White supremacy but is it, a it philosophy. Goes to show you, that our lives do matter, but they don't matter to them. We have to boycott. We have to boycott, and we have to train our own own selves and 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 avoid and avoid the uh, yeah. unhealthy. The real state automatics. Thank you. Happy right. New Year. Thank you. Well, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Thank we're you. gonna be strong, and we're gonna get through this. Right. Our ancestors did it. They right. already did this for us. We don't. We have been here before. No one. No one can do this better than we can. Be well. Right. All right. Thank brother. you. Thanks for the call. Let me say this because, like I said, uh, you can you can you can argue about Sharpton all you want. But Sharpton is out of this. You can argue about the black church. The black church is out of this. There's not one black leader. Not Morial. Not Sharpton. Not Jesse. Not not Butts. Calvin Butts. Right. None of them uh, uh, told the protesters to lay down on the I-395 in right. Washington, D.C. and stop traffic. None of them told them to sit in Macy's and disrupt right. business right. as usual. Right. No, there's not one leader who, who could control the fact right. that they shut down a shopping mall that was uh, the size of 20. They are, they are actually attacking their pocketbooks. Media has not reported this. Right. Now, if you, if you actually want to know the changing of the guard, let me, let me, let me uh, uh, tell you about this, because a lot of people uh, have capitalized on the fact that this was a major story. Right. February 26th. 2012. The year 2012. Yep. Uh. Three things happened that year. Yep. The year was, was, uh, uh, that day, February 26, 2012, was the day of the Academy Awards. Right. And on that day, 
uh, a white woman, Meryl Streep, right. won the best actress for portraying Margaret Thatcher, a global leader with tremendous power. Right. That same year, Viola Davis won Best Supporting Actress for playing a maid in The Help, <laughs> where she talked about how she put Crisco oil on her husband's <laughs> ashy feet. <laughs> and I'm not laughing because of that. I know where you're going with right. that. But go ahead. February 26, 2012 was also the day that George Zimmerman hunted down and killed Trayvon Martin. That's correct. While, every, while almost everybody was consumed in the Academy Awards, right. long before Sharpton got whiff of it, long before any leader got whiffed of it, there was a story that was beginning to go viral on the Internet. Facebook was all, all, all the women on Facebook was talking about how this black woman was going to right. win the Rusty Foot Award and <laughs> stuff like that. But the internet, the, the, the people who are politically astute and aware were already making the Trayvon Martin case go viral right. where it was either get on this train yep. or, or be irrelevant. Right, right. And that's when leaders got involved in it. Right. Uh, uh, you can you can talk about um, um, who is the leader, but like I said, there's a different generation with a different mindset and a different skill set yep. yep. that are now taking the lead. Uh, you and can, the leaders don't have anything to the, do with it. First of all, um, no matter how sincere the leaders may or may not be, right. there is one undeniable fact. Right. Their methods lack efficacy Let's say that they, again, their methods lack efficacy excellent it ain't working if it's not working you have to rethink your methodology right the jets just fired the coach the team loves the coach <laughs> the coach might be a real a really good, good coach a really good, good person, person but not a good coach but the jets lost over and over and over again. Got to try something that Your works. Your leaders may be good people. They may <laughs> believe what they're saying. Right. But the efficacy is not there. We have over 2 million people of, uh, black people in, 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 in the prison system. The school system, that, uh, as it relates to us, is completely uh, uh, ineffectual. As a matter of fact, it's problematic. We have, we have a, a, a prison system, like I said before, right. that is now privatized and one of the highest uh, uh, money earners on Wall Street. That's true. Um, 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 headed by none other than Bill Gates. Right. <laughs> um, um, we have uh, tremendous, tremendous problems. Uh, the rent structure does not bear out the fact we can't live in the rent structure. Nope. We have no jobs coming in. Nope. We have no education system. They are throwing us in jail and shooting us for being alleged to sell loose cigarettes <laughs> in the street when we have no cigarettes. But more, moreover, and get away with it. And get away with it. That's with crazy. impunity. That's with crazy. impunity. That's crazy. With impunity. You have tongue kissed a piranha <laughs> that you cannot control right. by going to the black church and singing Kumbaya or inviting Rachel Nord, whatever her <laughs> name is, <laughs> to work for your wife. You know They're just out of the loop. We're going to run out of time, but let's, let's wrap this up with, let's end this with Governor Cuomo. Oh, yeah, the death of Governor, uh, Governor Cuomo. Um, there are a lot of people who have mixed feelings about Governor What's Cuomo. What's your feelings on him? I wasn't in New York when he was governor. I was in New York when yeah. he was governor. Um, I, think, I think that, uh, that uh, Governor Cuomo um, tried to be a good person. I think that there were some things that worked against him. A lot of things worked against him. Um, being being a white male of privilege, there are certain preconceived notions that sure. you have in your head that you cannot get away from. Right. That you're not even aware that you have. Right. Uh, uh, certainly, the Tawana Brawley uh, fiasco uh, caused bitter feelings on 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 right. one side. There are some things where you kind of you know. I mean, he was likable enough. Right. In in any event, unlike Pat. Common as a housefly, Lynch. 
uh, 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 I'm not going to waste my time celebrating the death of someone. Right. Um, uh, Cuomo was was governor of New York. Um, a lot of people uh, liked had him. A, liked him. A lot of people. A didn't. lot of people. Uh, uh, a lot of people didn't. Um, but he was governor. I think he conducted himself with with uh, with decorum and. Uh, but um, I did so know uh, when he was governor, when uh, Dinkins was mayor. Right. And they always seemed to have a butt heads, and they were from the same party. Well, um, party. <laughs> if, uh, <laughs> for sake of better words. Um, for sake uh, of better words. Uh, Three and a half minutes. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, there, let you wrap, there, I'll let you wrap that yeah, up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not confronted with, uh, with uh, party con uh, supremacy. <laughs> 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 you know, um, again, um, um, you know, you can be in the same party and still be uh, uh, perceived. First of all, if, if you're black, there are certain things you're perceived of. You're perceived as not being quite as bright as white folks. Right. Um, and, and this perception is basically from white folks. Right. <laughs> Um, um, if, <laughs> if, if, if you are, if you are dying to be accepted by, white uh, folks, white folks <laughs> you are going to run into some difficulties, you know, um, um, so I, I think Dinkins, uh, like Obama tried to, uh, he, he concentrated far too much on being accepted by white, white folks, folks instead of doing the job. Instead of doing the job and doing the right thing. That does it. I'm Greg Lasseter. No, yeah, uh, other, yeah. no other than we, the Yeah, great we, still got a, we, we still got a few, uh, few, minute, We still got two minutes. Um, there's Corey. Uh, 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 <laughs> Corey, my iPod is plugged in. Make sure that uh, they uh, play my closing music when it hits seven. I'm going to bother Corey. I know he don't want to be bothered by me, <laughs> but I don't care. Yes, and uh, this is on live TV, so he can't cuss me out. Corey if this Bryce, was tape, I'd probably have to edit it. Corey Bryce <laughs> is one of our facilitators who yeah. is actually... One of the greatest facilitators. He here. really is. He, he really, really is. It's because of Corey and mm -hmm. yourself right. that I'm here. Well, I um 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 I appreciate the callers. The callers are brilliant. The callers oh, awesome make this callers. show. Right. They uh, uh uh they are aware. They are astute, and they are involved. And right. that's what we need. That's what we need. Um um uh we got skin in this game. I am not trying to cultivate right. a generation. Of of servants, right? Uh, that's I am done. trying to. That's done. It's done. It's a that's, wrap. With that's, that. yeah. It's a wrap. Yeah. It's it's a wrap. Um, we need we need artists, scientists, uh, technicians. We need people with the skills and the loyalty to their uh, culture uh, uh, that uh, affects a change within our community, so that we can affect a change uh, across, across the globe. The world. Um, you know what? And I always said, change yourself. Change the world. Correct. Correct. 30 frames a second, guys. I thank you guys for watching us every week. We'll be back at the same time every week, the same channel. Remember this. Shoot for the moon. If you miss, you're still among the stars. I'm Greg Lasseter with no other than the great creative himself, Nat Wood. Nat, I thank you for letting me be one of the hosts of 30 frames. You, you were a good choice. You, uh, thank you. You're, you're you you got your money's worth. Yeah, I got, I got my money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll be back next week, and, we, and we're going to really piss people off before this year is out. Oh, See you next year. week. We out. <laughs>